Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about Henry VIII's Six Wives. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, but I wanted to wait until I visited Hampton Court before I made it. So I visited Hampton Court not that long ago, it was really beautiful there. In this video I've also created this look inspired by probably Henry VIII's most famous wife, Anne Boleyn. Before I show you how to do this very quick and simple makeup look, I'm first going to talk about Henry VIII's six wives, who were Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard and Catherine Parr. Catherine of Aragon was born on the 16th of December 1485. She was the youngest surviving child of Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella of Castile. They were joint rulers of Spain. At a very young age, she was betrothed to Arthur, the son of King Henry VII of England. In 1501, when Catherine was almost 16 years old, she travelled to England where she married Arthur on the 14th of November 1501. They lived together at Ludlow Castle on the Welsh border, but less than six months later Arthur died, possibly of an illness known as the sweating sickness. Fourteen months after her husband's death, Catherine was betrothed to Arthur's younger brother, the future Henry VIII, who was too young to marry at the time. But by the time Henry was old enough to marry, his father, Henry VII, was no longer keen on a Spanish alliance. But when Henry VII died, Henry VIII was crowned king, and he married Catherine on the 24th of June, 1509. Shortly after their marriage, Catherine was pregnant. But sadly, this child was a stillborn daughter born prematurely. Catherine endured seven pregnancies, and every child died in pregnancy or early infancy except for a daughter named Mary. Henry grew frustrated from not having a male heir. Henry VIII had at least two known mistresses, Elizabeth Blount and Mary Boleyn. By 1526, Henry VIII had fallen in love with Mary Boleyn's sister, Anne Boleyn. Catherine was now 42 years old and was no longer able to conceive. Henry still wanted a male heir and no longer wanted to be married to Catherine. Henry began to look at the text of Leviticus, which say that if a man takes his brother's wife, they shall be childless. The king began to petition the Pope for an annulment. Catherine then appealed directly to the Pope herself. Catherine's case was helped due to the fact that her nephew was Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor. Catherine was adamant that she and Arthur did not consummate their marriage and so therefore were not truly husband and wife. She also made the case that she and Henry were not childless, as they had a surviving daughter. The legal debate continued for six years. In 1533, Anne Boleyn became pregnant and Henry knew he now needed to act fast. His solution was to reject the power of the Pope in England and to have the Archbishop of Canterbury grant the annulment. Catherine was to renounce the title of Queen and would be known as the Princess Dowager of Wales, something she refused to acknowledge through to the end of her life. Catherine and her daughter were separated and she was forced to leave court. Catherine lived for the next three years in several castles and manors with just a few servants. On the 7th of January 1536, Catherine died and was buried at Peterborough Abbey as the Princess Dowager, not as the Queen of England. Not much is known about Anne Boleyn's early years. Anne spent part of her childhood at the court of the Archduchess Margaret. She was later transferred to the household of Mary, Henry VIII's sister, who was married to Louis XII of France. Anne stayed under Queen Mary's attendance with her sister, Mary Boleyn. But when King Louis died, Mary Boleyn returned to England with Mary Tudor, while Anne remained in France to attend the new French Queen. Anne returned to England around 1521 and went to court to attend Queen Catherine. Her first recorded appearance at court was on the 1st of March 1522 at a mass. Exactly when and where Henry VIII first noticed Anne is not known. It is likely that Henry wanted Anne as his mistress, as he had had her sister Mary as his mistress. It is said that Anne denied Henry VIII sexual favours unless she became queen. Anne showed real interest in religious reform, suggesting new ideas to Henry, which angered some of the members of the court. 
and was also unpopular with the people of England who favoured Catherine of Aragon. King Henry showed his passion for Anne with many love letters he wrote while Anne was away at court. Henry began to seek an annulment of his marriage to Catherine, making him free to marry again. Sometime near the end of 1532, Anne fell pregnant. To avoid any questions of the legitimacy of the child, Henry was forced into action. Anne and Henry were secretly married, although the king was still married to Catherine. On the 23rd of May, the Archbishop officially proclaimed that the marriage of Henry and Catherine was invalid, and on the 1st of June, Anne was crowned and anointed queen. Henry was convinced that Anne was pregnant with a boy, but on August 26, 1533, the Princess Elizabeth was born. Anne now knew she had to have a son. Anne quickly fell pregnant again, but the child was either miscarried or stillborn. In 1535, Anne was again pregnant but miscarried. Anne blamed the miscarriage on her state of mind after hearing that Henry had taken a fall in jousting. Anne became increasingly worried from her lack of male heir, especially since the king now fancied one of Anne's ladies-in-waiting, Jane Seymour. Anne's enemies at court began to plot against her and Thomas Cromwell began to move into action to bring down the Queen, persuading the King to sign a document calling for an investigation that would possibly result in charges of treason. In 1536, Anne's musician and friend of several years, Mark Smeaton, was arrested and probably tortured into making revelations about the Queen. Sir Henry Norris was then arrested and taken to the Tower of London and then the Queen's own brother, George Boleyn, was arrested. On May the 2nd, Anne Boleyn was arrested and was informed of her charges against her, adultery, incest and plotting to murder the King. There were then several more arrests. Sir Francis Weston and William Burriton were charged with adultery with the Queen and Sir Thomas Wyatt was also arrested but later released. On the 15th of May 1536, the Queen and her brother were put on trial at the Great Hall of the Tower of London and denied all charges against her. On May the 17th, George Boleyn was executed on Tower Hill. Anne received news that an expert swordsman from Calais had been summoned to issue a clean blow. Shortly before her execution on charges of adultery, Anne's marriage to Henry was declared invalid, which would have meant Anne couldn't have committed adultery if she had in fact never been married to the king, but this was overlooked, as were many of the other charges against Anne. On the morning of May the 19th, 1536, Anne was beheaded with one swift stroke. Jane was born to a wealthy family. She was the daughter of Sir John Seymour and Marjorie Wentworth. She was a descendant of King Edward III. She first came to court in the service of Queen Catherine, but then she was moved to wait on Anne Boleyn. In September 1535, the King stayed at the Seymour family home in Wiltshire, England. It may have been there that the King first noticed Jane, but it isn't until February 1536 that there is evidence of Henry's new love for Jane. Aside from her beauty and status, Jane's timid and reserved nature is what is thought to have been what attracted the king to her, personality traits which were very different from his previous wives. Within 24 hours of Anne Boleyn's execution, Jane Seymour and Henry VIII were formally betrothed. On the 30th of May, they were married at Whitehall Palace. Unlike Henry's previous two queens, Jane never had a coronation. Jane fell pregnant in 1537 and gave birth to the son Henry had been longing for, Prince Edward. Jane was reported to have fallen very ill on October the 23rd. She then died on October the 24th, two weeks after giving birth. Jane was buried at St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. She was the only one of Henry's six wives to be buried with him. Henry VIII remained single for over two years after Jane Seymour's death. But Thomas Cromwell began making inquiries shortly after Jane's death about a possible foreign bride for Henry. Thomas Cromwell believed an alliance was necessary as the two major Roman Catholic powers, France and the Holy Roman Empire, were about to join together to attack Protestant England. Henry was advised to form a political alliance with William, Duke of Cleves, who was the leader of the Protestants of Western Germany. Henry wanted to be sure he was getting a desirable bride so he had agents in foreign courts report to him on the appearance and other qualities of various candidates. He also sent painters to bring him images of these women. A painter painted the sisters of the Duke of Cleves, 
Anne and Amelia, and Henry decided he liked the look of Anne, so Thomas Cromwell arranged for marriage. The marriage took place on the 6th of January 1540, but Henry was already looking for ways to get out of the marriage. Henry did not find his new bride the least bit attractive and thought she was not suited for life at the English court. Henry had also become attracted to young Catherine Howard. Henry attempted to annul the marriage and Anne of Cleves also testified that the match had not been consummated and that her previous engagement to the son of the Duke of Lorraine had not been properly broken. After the marriage had been dissolved, Anne accepted the honorary title as the king's sister and was given property including Hever Castle, formerly the home of Anne Boleyn. Anne died on the 16th of July 1557. She is buried at Westminster Abbey and was the last surviving wife of Henry VIII. Catherine Howard was the daughter of Lord Edmund Howard, a younger brother of Thomas Howard, Duke of Norfolk. She was also first cousin to Anne Boleyn. She was brought up in the household of the Dowager Duchess of Norfolk. Catherine came to court at about the age of 19 as a lady in waiting to Anne of Cleves. It is likely that Catherine's young spirit attracted Henry. Not long after Henry was free of Anne, Henry married Catherine Howard on the 28th of July 1540. Henry was 49 and his bride was only about 19. Less than a year into Catherine's marriage, rumours began of her infidelity. Henry had found out that before their marriage, Catherine had had affairs with Henry Maddock, a music teacher, Francis Derham, whom she had recently appointed as her personal secretary, and Thomas Culpepper, to whom she had been engaged and many believed that Catherine committed adultery with him. Enough evidence was gathered that the Queen had had sexual relations before her marriage and possibly during her marriage. Catherine was executed on the Tower Green on the 13th of February 1542 and is laid to rest near her cousin Anne Boleyn. Catherine Parr was born in 1512. She was the eldest daughter of Sir Thomas Parr and his wife Maud Green, both of whom were at court of Henry VIII in his early reign. Maud was a lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon and named her daughter after her. Catherine Parr's first marriage was to Edward Burra in 1529 when she was 17. Her husband Edward died only a few years after their marriage. Catherine's second marriage was to John Neville. Neville died in 1543, leaving Catherine a widow for the second time. It was around this time that Catherine was noticed not only by King Henry VIII, but also Thomas Seymour, the brother of the late Queen Jane Seymour. Catherine wanted to marry Thomas Seymour after her husband's death, but the king requested for her hand and Catherine felt it was her duty to accept. Catherine and Henry VIII were married on the 12th of July at Hampton Court Palace. Catherine was interested in the reformed faith, making her enemies with Henry's court. In 1546, a plot was led against the queen. Catherine and her ladies were known to have had banned books, which was grounds for arrest and execution on charges of heresy. There was more evidence against the Queen to issue a warrant for her arrest. The warrant for her arrest was accidentally dropped and someone loyal to the Queen saw it and then quickly told her about it. Henry spoke to Catherine about her charges and forgave her. Henry VIII died in January 1547 and Catherine was never regent for the now young King Edward VI. A few months after Henry's death, Catherine secretly married Thomas Seymour. At the age of 36, Catherine was pregnant for the first time. She gave birth to a daughter named Mary. Catherine soon fell ill with a fever and died on the 5th of September 1548. Catherine was buried with Lady Jane Grey. Now I'm going to show you how to get this simple makeup look inspired by Anne Boleyn. I'm using a BB cream, I don't want to have a heavy coverage for this look and Anne is said to have had more of an olive skin tone so this BB cream is slightly darker than my natural tone. Now I'm just filling in my brows. Some accounts say that Anne had certain small moles or beauty spots on her face and on her neck so I'm just drawing on a couple of beauty spots with my eyebrow pen. Taking the shade Nudie from my natural matte palette I'm applying this over my lids with my fingertip and I'm also running this under my eyes. And then with the shade Risqué I'm applying this to my outer corners. 
Then using an orangey lip shade, I'm just applying this lightly to the centre of my lips and that completes this look inspired by Anne Boleyn. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe to see more from me. Bye!